What's up guys, Doug Polk here and we're back with yet another World Series of Poker main event hand analysis. In this hand, we are down to just the final three players of the main event. Somebody's taken home all the gold. And while this hand just happened and thought it was pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. You know, it kind of becomes a level, you know, this orders of thinking, oh, if this person knows that, but he knows that I know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. They're on a $2 million bubble right now. Third place worth $4 million. Second place, $6 million. Livingston now, the one with the sixes, going up against Ensign's 9-4 in the big blind. Our hand begins at 1 million, 2 million chip blinds, and we're three-handed, so all the hands are going to be with pretty loose ranges. The button decides to get out of the way, and the small blind, Livingston, decides to just call with his pocket sixes. And when you're in this spot with a little bit of uh, stack depth left behind to play with, you're going to want to traditionally use a lot of limps in your range. You're getting simply far too good of odds here with the big blind anti at play, and there's a lot of hands you want to play. So by calling with hands like pocket sixes, you balance out some of the weak hands you might want to play like jack five offsuit or queen deuce suited or even a hand like four two offsuit you're going to want to play all of these really weak hands because your price is simply just too good so to balance that out you put in uh, some stronger hands like sixes or if you do face a raise you can play some hands over to Ensign with the 9-4 offsuit. He now has to decide if he wants to bump it up. And this hand is very weak. You mainly want to be checking. I will say if I'm playing against players I think are a little too conservative, I'll mix in the raise with a hand this week every now and then to take down the pot because you do get pretty good odds on a raise. If he raises to 7 million here, well, he only risks 5 million more, and that's in order to win uh, 6 million already in the pot. So he gets pretty good odds to steal, and I might work in some very loose raises against people that play too conservative. However, you can't go wrong checking your total garbage here which he does and let's take a flop do you feel like uh livingston feels oh, wow. as though he got rivered for two million dollars <laughs> yeah i think so <laughs> yeah i mean like if dario if goes out there these two are guaranteed six so what a flop livingston with a set of sixes and ensign flopping the nine that's two million here interesting that's the minimum bet, two million with a big blind that amount. And check raising might just end this hand right here, which is a nightmare for Livingston. Shows we've seen Anton get sticky and, and make some weird plays. I think he's hoping. Yeah, he's just definitely Ooh. playing his opponent here. He reached for a mini stack, a little stub of those five million chips that just gonna Take a haircut off one and make the call. The flop comes king nine six rainbow. Livingston flops a set. This is the dream. You're deep in the main. Final three. You flopped your set. And you're up against what has been, frankly, a maniac on all the chips. The question now is what should Livingston do with this set? I think I would mainly bet. I know if you check your opponent, might bet a bunch too. But if you bet, he's shown to be extremely aggressive. He's probably going to raise a bunch. He can call you some. There's all kinds of good things that can happen. Maybe if I had a super strong hand like pocket kings or uh, something like that, I would maybe consider a little bit more checking because my opponent is simply unlikely to have anything that strong. But with sixes, there's a lot of hands that could be putting in a raise for value. And also your opponent might just make a move anyway. But you can't go wrong with an occasional check check here like Livingston does. Ensign decides to go ahead and bet 2 million now when checked to, and I have to say I'm not a huge fan of this bet. It can't be that bad. It is a min bet with very wide ranges and he has middle pair, but this is the kind of problem with betting this hand. If he did check back the flop, what does that mean? Doesn't have a king. Probably doesn't have a nine. Maybe as a six, but he might not have that either. And so the problem is if you're going to bet every pair when checked to, well, now when you check back, your opponent can bluff you a lot and they're going to they're gonna know that you're very weak. So my weak second pairs are the kinds of hands I like to check back on the flop and get ready to call down if my opponent starts betting. However, it is a very small bet. In fact, it's the minimum bet and he has a hand that's going to be ahead of Livingston's range. So you can't hate the play too much, but I'd prefer a check. Back over to Livingston, you got to raise here, guys. This pot needs to get a lot bigger. You've got a set and been playing some small ball for quite a while in this hand. It's time to spring the trap and come to life, which Livingston does, bumping it up to 7.5 million chips. Everything looks good here. Now back over to Ensign with 9-4. This is one of the problems with betting. You face check raise, you're in a bit, bit of a difficult spot. There's no way he can let go yet, though. He does still have a pair. His opponent could be making a move with a straight draw, and this board has a lot of them. Queen-Jack, Queen-10, Jack-10, 10-8, 10, 
uh, 7, 8, 7, 5, 8, 5. There are so many straight draws here on this flop to, to make moves with. So you got to at least call here on the flop, which he does. And let's take a turn. Big pot. After Livingston. playing for a week Ugh. straight with these people, I mean, Alex knows Ensign better than anyone, right? And he thinks normally I wouldn't check raise sixes here. My hand's strong. The board's kind of disconnected. Um, but he thinks if Ensign's going to call it, then hey. Now, Livingston betting his set of sixes to the tune of 13 and a half is, million. Is, is enough? The, the, the big 90 one. maybe. Okay. A little under by our count. As you see down on the lower left, the chip count there is what the players have left in their stack after acting. And Ensign has announced raise, drawing dead. And Livingston's strange line here is massively paying off. <laughs> and I'm not sure that's a legal raise. And Alex is thinking the same thing. 13.5? That graphic is wrong. I think he <laughs> min-raised him. Yeah, the graphic is wrong. It, it was a min-raise. He didn't actually put enough in to make a min-raise, but it creates the min-raise situation. Well, it has been all smooth road for Hossein Ansan at this final table, and he has just hit his first pothole. And he couldn't do much about the double up to Dario. He, that was a fine play. This is like an unforced error. The turn comes the Queen of Diamonds, which is a pretty good card for Livingston. Sure, Jack-10 has now improved the nuts, but plenty of other hands are in his opponent's range that haven't improved. And also, there's no backdoor flush draw. He's looking really good here unless this river comes a Jack or a 10, and so he doesn't have to be too concerned with the runouts at play. Now, he decides to bet $13.5 million. Uh, I don't hate this bet. I might even go a little bit bigger, given the way that things have been going down. Uh, I do think that, you know, this is a healthy size bet. I don't mind the play. It's just something against Enson specifically. He seems to play back a lot, and I wouldn't mind getting a little bit of extra value. But this is totally fine to make it this size. Now over to Enson. He's got a very clear fold. He could have a king. He could have jack-10. He could have queen-9. He could have... Maybe queen six the way he plays. He could have any of the other two pairs for sure. Uh, he can have all kinds of hands here that are better than nine four. He has nine four. He's got middle pair and a shitty kicker in a spot against the tightest player at the, at the table who we just did a video on where he folded queens to a three bet. This is not the spot. You got to let this go. But he's got other ideas in mind. That's right. A raise to the minimum. Not a play you're going to see too often because... It's not very good, but this is how he's built his stack by harassing these smaller stacks in these situations. There are maybe some hands Livingston would have to give up with here. If he was bluffing himself, he'd be toast. Maybe if he had a hand like, uh, a, like a strong king, he might be very worried. But, you know, I don't know if Livingston has hands like that. I'm not sure if he's constructing his range like that. And even if he is, even if he could have some of those hands, at the same time, wouldn't you rather pick something with equity? Wouldn't you rather have a hand like 10-9 where you could at least hit the nuts on the river or jack-9 or something like that? Something that has real playability to a hand that you can believe in? This is just straight nonsense. This is a min-raise with middle pair because I really don't know anymore, guys, but this highlights the beauty of the main event. You've got some guys coming in, playing as tight as they possibly can to try and ladder up and make more money. And then you got other guys who are playing for the glory. Maybe a little too much glory. And so you, it comes down to spots like this. Now, Livingston made a big fold with Queens yesterday. Will he make another one here? All in. All in. A shove over the top. And Insan has been caught and knows it and quickly gives it up. Alex Livingston with a monster pot. And the answer to that question is no. Thank you for joining me today for Poker Hands. This is the first ever triple header we've done on the channel. Three videos in one day. If you like the content we had today, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon. Peace.